Today on The Daily Review, we discuss kind of lost film, The Professor and the Madman, directed by the pseudonym P.B. Shemran, starring Mel Gibson and Sean Penn, with your host, me, Joe LaRocca. Welcome. Uh, yeah, so this is a strange one, because uh, it's based on a book that was very, very popular called The Surgeon of, what was it, Crowsworth or Crows, Crow, Crowthorn? I forget, because that's what it was in, in, in originally when it was public, published in England by Simon Winchester, but uh, it came out in the United States as The Professor and the Madman, because that's a more, I mean, I couldn't even remember the other title, because I'm just a dumb American, so you got to say... The Professor and the Madman. It's more evocative, right? So uh, this is the story of the the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary. And uh, it's about as exciting as a movie about the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary. Um, I can imagine that this book is tremendous because it the story about defining words and the importance of words and the importance of language and the history of it is is something about that writing a book using words discussing how important words are seems to gel quite nicely whereas writing and researching and the kind of internal things that you can hit with a book uh, are not visually interesting you know Sure, you can have a montage or a sequence where somebody's researching. Like, I always think of Seven. That, that movie has a really good, like, researching sequence with Morgan Freeman. But, like, that's, like, you can't have a whole movie of that because, um, yeah, it's just not visually particularly interesting. So this movie falls in a weird place where I feel like a very, very small minority of people in, would like this movie. Because the people who like the book would just be disappointed by the movie. And so, and if you love the book or you love words, you've probably read the book or you would go, yeah, you know, you see what I'm, yeah, I'm not describing it exactly perfectly, but it's not a poorly made movie. It looks fine. The script isn't that bad. The dialogue's really bad. The dialogue's really on the nose, but the, the pacing and the ideas and the script aren't bad and it's not shot poorly. Um, and the acting isn't bad. Mel Gibson's actually pretty damn good in it. Uh, and Sean Penn is, a, <laughs> I mean, he might be chewing the scene a little bit. He might be a little over the top. Um, but I mean, I guess his character is supposed to have schizophrenia and has lots of, you know, uh, m mental issues, uh, that cause him, uh, vexation. It makes you, yeah, the movie makes you want to speak in like the biggest words, you know, which is, you know, a good aspect of it. But all right. So let me just give you the overview. Mel Gibson plays James Murray, an autodidact. That means he taught himself. I taught myself that word. Uh, he gets, like, basically takes on the endeavor because he knows all these languages. He's, like, kind of a genius, and he's very organized. And he takes on Oxford, has him come on as, you know, let's get this dictionary thing on the books, literally. <laughs> like, defining every word in, in qu qu quotation, citing it, and, like, the historic and the pronunciation and setting up the rules and protocol behind how we will continue to add to this thing. And once they present you with that in the first, like, 25 minutes, you start going, jeez, imagine writing the dictionary. You know what I mean? It seems like one of those elemental books that was just always there. It's the phone book or something. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's just always, no one wrote that. It's just, like, there. We just take it for granted, you know? But that there was a time period not even that long ago, like, in the late 1800s. It wasn't even, they didn't finish the Oxford English Dictionary until, like, 1920-something, like, fully complete you know, 11 volumes or whatever it was. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it, 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 it uh, uh, <laughs> boy, I should have took, taken a look at, taken a look at a dictionary before I started this. Um, uh, yeah, so, but it does make you go think about, wow, what in a, a crazy endeavor and what truly, her like, not her heroes, that's probably not the right word, but like, what an amazing job people did to conglomerate all of these words until the very last blurb 
which I'll get to in a second. I don't want to spoil it just yet. But yeah, uh, so at first I was like, wow, what a daunting task. This is kind of a good, this is a good plot for like an hour and a half long movie, maybe. But uh, it just starts getting pretty nutty. So then Sean Penn, he plays William Minor, who was a Civil War, U.S. Civil War guy, surgeon, and he saw some crazy shit. And then he ends up like living in London and shooting a guy because he's, you know, he's got problems and he thinks people are chasing him and he chases after a random guy and shoots him and uh, gets put in an insane asylum. Um, but then strikes up a relationship with Eliza Merritt, who's the wife of the man he murdered. Because uh, they have like all these kids, and she has she just like turned to prostitution and stuff, and he's like give, giving her money, and, and then she starts coming to visit, and he starts teaching her to read and stuff. So I don't know how true that stuff was, but it didn't feel authentic. Like the filmmaker didn't make it feel right. Like I I, I don't I, I don't know maybe maybe maybe, but that's Natalie Dormier uh, plays Eliza Merritt, and she does fine. She's good. You know, all the acting is fine. Just the dialogue is just... I was always taught that, like, you, the, you write dialogue... People usually say the opposite of what they mean, you know? People aren't so cogent, you know, to, like, say, like, a thesis. You know, there's a part where, like... Where is it? Where they literally are, like... Mel Gibson has a line who's, like... You know, or, you know, they, they, they end up, you know, okay, so it was just uh, uh, how they intersect here is that Murray is, like, working on this, and, and, and he gets the idea of, like, hey, how about we just enlist everybody who reads books to help us and send in, you know, words that in quotations and stuff to help us, like, fill, fill in the gaps or whatever. So in every book, in every library, in every store, they put a little pamphlet in there being like, hey, we need your help. And so he, uh, the madman, gets it. William Minor and starts uh, really di like it helps him with his madness, which I don't think is a word we use anymore. But he, it, 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 you know, it, it soothes his mind to to p put his efforts somewhere else. You know, I would I would have to think that if you have like severe a severe mental issue, uh, then locking somebody in a room has got to be like one of the worst things you can do. You know, because then it's just them in their mind. It's like not you know. It's like the opposite of what you should do. You should be like uh, engaging them so that to occupy their mind. You know, give them some video games or something. <laughs> give them Twitter. Um, and I think that's what happened actually. Uh, so um, anyway, the whole the movie, you know, he takes it on and, and he's really good at it because he is he's very smart. Just because he has a mental issue doesn't mean he's not smart, as we know. And uh, they end up forming a relationship and he you know they end up meeting up a few times he comes up to the to the insane asylum and they realize how they have so many things in common but there's like a line where he's like i'm the you're the genius and i'm the madman and <laughs> mel gibson's like yeah but which one is which or whatever it's like yeah dude we got it <laughs> all right because at first i was thinking oh they should have reversed the casting because mel gibson plays a crazy person better but so mel gibson you know that's that's the other thing you know that's the thing about this so yeah i, I thought the movie was like technically fine but i found it really dry and boring and and a lot of the conflict i don't think were uh um drawn out well enough and the story itself is not particularly visual so it gets a little bit boring and when you don't have a very good visual story you have to have great dialogue like david mamet should have wrote in this wrote and written this or like the coen brothers or something that would though though i mean obviously the coen, any movie that's not good you just go oh the coen brothers should have done this but it, i think that they could have done it and made the dialogue wittier because i think the dialogue is witty but the way they play because they are punning on each other all the time and using words but it, the way it comes off is not enjoyable you know um, it's interesting because Steve Coogan was in, is in this, and I was like, oh man, this would be so much better if it were Coogan and Bry well, in Bryden, and it was like an Armando Iannucci, you know, <laughs> like it, it was like a cock and bull story, like when they did that, like it's historic and kind of literary, but also like light, so that the heaviness of the literariness doesn't bog you down, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's on Netflix, and it was shot in 2006, but just re 16, excuse me, uh, but it recently uh, came out on Netflix. You know, its official release is 2019, but um, it, was, it was directed by uh, a guy named, oh, let me look this up. Uh, I mean, I have it written down on the thing, but I can't, oh, oh what's the guy's name? Because uh, he, it's a pseudonym, he went by a pseudonym of P.B. Shemran, 
but his act the actual guy yeah what's the what's the point if you can just look it up oh uh Farhad S- uh Safina I think I hope I'm saying that right uh and he worked with Mel Gibson on a few projects like uh, uh Passion of the Christ and stuff and then you know he's an Iranian guy from Tehran he's young and so they were like you direct this and it's uh it's not I don't know better than I could do but it's not it it doesn't really all hold together. There's like not a lot of consistency in style and tone, you know? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's okay. I mean, I am assuming the book is phenomenal. I mean, I've had tons of people tell me that this book was great. I remember hearing about the movie, like in the early two thousands that Mel Gibson was like, wanted to do it. And then something happened to Mel Gibson. I can't remember. Oh, that's right. He turned out to be kind of like uh, really bigoted. Um, and see, this is a weird thing, you know, that thing with artists and separating the art from the artist that has come up a bunch on this channel. And it's certainly something that can be talked about here because what do you do? I mean, Mel Gibson, I mean, I don't even remember a hundred percent. There's all those phone calls where he's screaming at that lady and he's like, he's like, when I want my dick sucked, you suck my dick. It's like, you have my food ready for me. It's like, it's crazy. I remember hearing it on the Opie and Anthony show. That a classy, that classy piece of media. Um, and uh, you can see Odie's foot just in the background there, sticking up. Um, uh, it is, uh, yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah, and and then what was it? He got pulled over for drunk driving, and we'd call him people candy tits or something like that, sugar tits, and then, and then all the anti-Semitic stuff. So, it's not good. Not not a good look, Mel. Um, and so he was canceled, and then we sort of brought him back. But I, I feel like people don't... I mean, what was the thing? Oh, what was his, his war movie? I really didn't like that. Hacksaw Ridge. That got, like, nominated for Best Picture and stuff. So that, like, kind of officially was like, he's back. But then I feel like... Uh, he hasn't done really anything I've liked in a long time. I haven't, but I also kind of steered away from him because it just... Uh, you know, he's just got, like, a bad vibe around him. And when that happens, like, I can only imagine that he's not going to be working with the best people and everything, you know? You know what I'm saying? So, um, who knows? They, everybody was very disappointed with the movie, though. There were all these legal battles over it, um, you know, because they, you know, who got final cut. And they were, they basically, Gibson and, uh, Voltage, and, and, and Voltage Pictures was some of, some of the people making it. And, uh, 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 Safina, Saf- yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, PB Shemran, uh, you know, they dis, they like disavowed it, and we're like, we had nothing to do with that, and it's a shame. They called it a huge disappointment. Um, and I would agree, it is kind of, a, it's a bar. If you need to like go to sleep, put this movie on. That's what I'll say. Maybe like, like grandma might love it. Your crossword doing grandma might be like, it was nice. Sorry, oh, I shouldn't have killed a little fruit fly on camera. I'm a monster. Being very conscious now that we're getting higher up in the algorithm and people, are, when you start getting more views, you start getting more hate. And the hate, well, some of it's very justified. Like, uh, like you know, I shouldn't have called Kevin Smith, uh, Kevin Hart, I mean, a fruit. I didn't mean it like, I didn't mean it to be homosexual, uh, homophobic. I did mean it to be homosexual, though. Uh, no, I, because I, I don't even think of that word as that. And it like, and, and somebody caught me out on that because I was kind of, uh, trashing him as they said for using all these homophobic slurs and then I go and use one like uh, like 30 seconds later so they made a very good point and uh yeah that's I want I want to be called out on stuff like that but then people were mad about somebody was like mad about the Bee Gees review they didn't even watch the movie and I was just saying like oh you know not particularly interesting documentary and they're like eh, you suck uh oh because I called that Brian Epstein Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> that was you know come on you know what I mean. <laughs> Guys, this is hard, and it's live, and it's unedited, and I do it every day, and I'm losing my mind, and it snowed 12 inches, and I tried to shovel a path, and I had stabbing chest pain, so I went, ah, that's good enough. Odie can just jump around outside. Hey, uh, um, anyway, <clears throat> yeah, maybe, you'll, maybe you're super into this, and if you are super into it, I would read the book. But the thing that, like, you know, at the end of these kind of bio- pick drama thingies, historical biography things. There's uh 
you know, like some text being like, and this guy went on to do this and this guy. And one of the last one was like, and they finally finished it in uh, in 1920 something, 70 years after after its initial conception. It's like. Because it, it, it dilutes the story, because if you if you if you're like, how long did it take to, you know, it's one of those things where you ask somebody to guess the number and then they guess too close and then your story isn't as interesting. Like if, if someone were like, how long do you think it took the Oxford English Dictionary to be written? I'd be like, oh, God, I don't know, uh, 30 years. And then they'd be like, oh, well, it's 70. And I'd be like, why did it take so long? <laughs> You know, it kind of I know that mo a lot of time is like figuring out just how to do it. And it's not like now where we have the Internet and all this connection between everything and like, uh, you know, computers to help us assist us. It's literally like writing down by hand. But I couldn't imagine it taking more than 30 years. But the fact that it took 70 years, it kind of like sucked all the juice out of it. It's like, ooh, boy, we should have gotten on that much earlier. <laughs> you know, uh, stop colonizing places and let's work on it. That Yeah, there's some interesting stuff about like colonization and other countries being upset with the dictionary for certain things and like that some of that stuff would have been more interesting so this is one of those stories that i feel like it either should have been shorter or it should have been like 10 episodes you know of like this mass and get it from every angle and like really um go into the nitty-gritty about like you know f have one whole episode about like a single word and what it takes to track down a single word and like prove that it means this throughout time and like cast it in iron for for all to see in your book you know anyway it looks like the cover makes it look like a civil war movie doesn't it it looks like general lee and uh swing like a door oh hey i added the synth camera although it's not fully set up properly hey, hey i gotta figure out how to make it not quite uh it's always gonna be uh blown out blown overblown overblown Blown out is what I'm trying to say uh, by the window because it's right in front of the window. And I think I should make it a little closer. But I set the camera up so that it's screen face down so that I could see it and set it up. But then I remembered that on these, on the older iPhones, those front cameras aren't as good as the one that's on, you know, like this camera. This one isn't as good as this one. So I should flip it around and that'll make it better. And then I can zoom in a little bit more and try and lock in so that it doesn't overexpose it. <clears throat> Anyway, it obviously makes way more sense to be over there than over the desk, but I had to build. I guess I can kind of show you. Uh, see? There it is. See, I built that thing. And it's got a light and a camera on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably lose my security deposit for that. But uh, we didn't pay a security deposit, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, so I guess we'll go to music. Uh, again... The the modular stuff is uh, not quite ready for human ears yet. As you might have noticed the past few days, I tried a few things a couple days ago. And, I mean, I think it sounds cool, but it's, uh, I don't know. I'm happy with it. I just, it's not ready for you guys. Like, because like, I don't, I, what I'm trying to say is I don't understand it. Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. And I only have one module right now. And that's, it's. it's it's awesome. It's gonna it, it's gonna be a fun journey to watch this thing fill up, watch my bank account drop, watch this box here fill up, just to make songs that go like Let's just reverse from what was happening yesterday here.